let me walk you through a scenario that's happened more than once. I'll be on the phone with someone that we're helping live overseas and get a second passport. Those are their goals. And I'll ask them, you know, what kind of place do you want to live in? And we'll figure out, okay, you like country X, for example. And they'll say, yeah, I like country X. And then we'll start to talk about passports. You know, let's talk about citizenship. Is it plan A, plan B citizenship? And they'll say, yeah, well, I like living in country X, so let's get a passport from country X. I'm going to tell you why that not only isn't necessary, but may be a bad idea. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson, and if you want to learn more about how Nomad Capitalist can help you reduce your taxes, live overseas, become a global citizen, and make more money, go to nomadcapitalist.com, learn about what it is that we do. Now, the message I want to convey in this video is very simple. Don't confuse living as a Nomad Capitalist with second citizenship. Now, there are a lot of benefits to having a second citizenship. We've got dozens of videos here on our channel about that topic. We also have dozens of videos about why you would want to live overseas and different places to live overseas. But the way I look at this nomad capitalist stuff is it is a puzzle. Okay? If you're going to have a bank account overseas or multiple bank accounts overseas, investments overseas, your corporate structure overseas to reduce your tax burden legally, uh, all the different pieces and puzzles of the nomad capitalist experience, the nomad capitalist lifestyle, they don't all need to be one piece of the puzzle. And what I've talked about so often is, you know, in the mid-90s, my family considered moving from the United States to New Zealand. And the idea was pack everything up, put it in the truck, take it to a boat, ship it over there, we're leaving, don't call us, we'll be over here now. Uh, now, certainly you'd still be a U.S. citizen for a while, you could become a New Zealand citizen eventually. Um, but in you know, the modern era, you know, 25 years later, you get to pick and choose the best places. It's not simply, I'm either here or here. It's, I can do some of this, I can cherry pick over here, I can take a little bit. This is why we say, go where you're treated best, okay? No one country is best at everything. No one country treats you the best in every aspect. And so, let's take an example. Someone says, well, Andrew, my goal is to live in Portugal. So, let's go and uh, do the Portugal Golden Visa program so I can get Portuguese citizenship. Um, and I can live in Portugal. Or, hey, Andrew, I really want to live in Europe, and I want to do like immediately, so let's go to the Malta citizenship program where I'm going to pay a million dollars to become a European Union citizen through Malta, and then I can go live in Europe. Well, it's not exactly how it works. And so what I want you to understand is you need to detach your different objectives. One thing I'll talk to people that we're working with about is what are the bullet point objectives? Let's start with the end in mind. Let's not come in with the shiny object syndrome of, I heard a Panama company is great, or I heard, you know, the Spanish golden visa is great. I want to look at your objectives. Okay, live in Europe. That's one objective. What's another objective? I'm an American. I want a second citizenship because maybe I want to leave the, the U.S. I want to give up my citizenship at some point. Or I'm not an American, but I like the idea of a second passport just as a diversification tool in case my country does something silly in the future. Those could be two different objectives. Okay, so I want to live in Europe does not mean I need to become a citizen of Europe. Let's take an example of where I am now. I'm in Malaysia. You can become a resident of Malaysia on a long-term basis by making investment or having a high paying job or numerous other things. You're almost never going to become a citizen of Malaysia. It's basically impossible. I think I've met one guy who 25 years later somehow managed to become a citizen. And by the way, if you've got a good passport and if you're an American, you might, you might do that swap. I mean, a guy like me who didn't want to be American might say, I'll trade you a US passport for an almost equally as good Malaysian passport. You might do that. If you're Canadian, uh, or if you're a dual citizen or triple citizen, you probably wouldn't give up all of your existing passports to be Malaysian when your only goal is really to live here, right? Uh, the same thing with the UAE. You're never going to become a citizen of the UAE if you live in Dubai. Yet so many people do it. Why? Tax benefits, warm weather, lots of shopping, just kind of a, a, a bit more aggressive version of Malaysia, okay, which has similar benefits. You know, Singapore. Now, getting permanent residence, let alone citizenship, has become impossible in Singapore in recent years, or at least almost impossible. Um, it didn't used to be the case. But nevertheless, 
you know, how many people, how many, you know, French or Canadians or Australians who are living in Singapore ever wanted to give up their passport to become Singaporean, which does not allow dual citizenship. They make you renounce. You know, so those are perfect examples of countries where you can imagine, yeah, hey, you know, I know a British friend who lives in Dubai. He's still British. He's not saying I need to get a UAE passport first. And so the same thing applies globally, in my opinion. And, and here's why this is important. I see people complicating their process, and I see them often overpaying to meet their objectives. Okay? You want to move to Europe? They have freelancer visas, self-sufficient visas, golden visas, entrepreneur visas, every kind of different visa. There's no shortage of ways to get into Europe. Now, many of them aren't very tax efficient. If your goal is, I'm a seven or eight figure entrepreneur and I want to not be paying 57% of my money in tax, okay? Um, but there's plenty of different ways to get into Europe without having to be a citizen. And you don't have to be a citizen. Now, the only downside in my opinion of not being a citizen of the country is they can theoretically reject your entry. You know, only citizens have to be let in. And you know, they can certainly change their policies at any time. If 10 years from now Malaysia decides we don't want foreigners anymore, I'm looking for a new place to spend some time, I suppose. Or I'll come as a tourist. So that is one downside. But other than that, you can live in a place, again, like Dubai, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, uh, what have you, without being a citizen. So my suggestion is, if you, one of your objectives is, I want to get a second passport, whatever the reason, look at the second passport that meets those objectives. Had someone recently, Andrew, I'm an American, um, it's making my business very complicated. I don't want to be an American anymore. Help me find a replacement for my U.S. citizenship. Oh, by the way, my wife really wants to live in Spain. Okay, great. You could go and pay a million dollars to Malta and become a European citizen pretty quickly. Uh, if you have ancestry, certainly that would be the way to go. But let's say you don't have ancestry. You can go and pay a million dollars to Malta. You could go and do uh, like a golden visa program in Spain. It's, it's half a million euros. Or you could go and get a passport in one of the Caribbean countries, for example, cost you a hundred thousand bucks, maybe one in 25, 150. It's a lot cheaper than 650,000 euros in donations, plus bond purchase, plus house purchase, plus everything else, plus higher fees in Malta. So you're already ahead hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Then you simply go and get a residence permit uh, in Europe. And then you go and get your tax, uh, partial tax exemption in Spain. And so you can live kind of sort of low tax. You can live in Europe, you get the lifestyle that you want. And in this gentleman's case, he can uh, remove himself from the US with a new passport. You have to split your goals into two. Now there's times where, uh, you know, I'll say, hey, great, this is the best residence country for you. By the way, they also have kind of good banking. So, all right, let's just get a bank account there. Maybe that bank account accomplishes your goals as well. So if we can do that, that's fine. But I always compartmentalize the objectives. Passports and living do not go hand in hand. They don't necessarily go hand in hand. Now, if that gentleman lives in Spain and they live there for the 10-year naturalization period in Spain and they wait the years it'll take them once they apply for citizenship to actually get it and they want to learn the language and all that, then eventually he can become a citizen of Spain. By the way, you might not want to become a citizen of some countries. They might have other rules that were, or other taxes or other whatever that you were trying to run, run away from the first place. So again, most people who live in Singapore as residents or as PRs don't want to become Singaporean if they're from the West. Uh, and there's a reason for that. And so definitely make sure you're compartmentalizing those goals. For me, uh, you want to have the objectives. You want to start with the end in mind. And if citizenship and living, you got to keep them separate. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you wanna lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.